h e y h i t c o n 哎啊，大家好，哎，我姓陈，名建松，来自马来西亚。哦，呃，我本身的中文不是讲的这么的好。哎，如果讲起治安的话，可能很多时候呢，那些字眼啊，那些专业名词，其实我本身我抓拿得不到。呃，所以请大家允许我在接下来这个五十分钟里面，用英文给大家分享关系到这个 Internet of Things、IoT、Honeypot 的事情。好，呃、uh, ，Good good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Ken Xiong. Yeah, I'm from Malaysia. Yeah, uh, I'm a Honeypot hobbyist, which is I deploy Honeypot at home. Just for my personal pleasure, personal interest basis. So today, I'm going to share with you what I have seen for the past uh, 15, uh, 18 months to two years right now. Yeah. So what I've seen for what's happening on my honeypot. Yeah. So for for the next 30 minutes, uh, for the next 50 minutes, we are going to explore three different simple story. So the first one, definitely, I love to share with you about. Uh, let's try to explore together about some of the Internet of Things. Uh, uh, Nail protocol, which is uh, MQTT, UPnP, and definitely Telnet protocol. Okay, so the second thing is uh, let's try to explore together about how my honeypot looks like, and then uh, the third stuff, I love to share with you a lot of interesting story that happened on my honeypot. I promise to you, I'm going to share some of the love story that I have in my honeypot with Mirai botnets. Now, not only one Mirai botnets, but lots of Mirai botnets. Yeah, so um, I promise, last but not least, I'm going to share some of the photos of my honeypot. So if I don't share you about the photos, don't let me go, okay? <laughs> yeah, for me, I IoT is just about device-to-device -device communications, sensor-to-sensor uh, sensor communications, machine-to-machine -machine, uh, communications. I love this picture the, uh, the most because uh, it actually concludes and symbolizes all the Internet of Things and what is that. So uh, just a quick introduction to, uh, uh, about myself. Uh, my name is Ken Xiong. I'm from Malaysia. Malaysia is a very good place. If you have a chance, you can go to Malaysia and walk around, go to Malaysia. Malaysia is very good. There are many good people, like me. Oh, no, I'm joking. Okay. Uh, I'm part of uh, the Honeynet project, which is uh, this project is an open source uh, project that um, uh, focusing on lots of uh, honeypot technologies and cyber de uh, the deceptions uh, capability itself. Uh, during my free time, I develop honeypots at home. I'm involved in some of the uh, open source development honeypots such as Dionia Honeypot. Also, uh, two years back, I found out one of the problems. How can we deploy honeypot in the easiest way? So Christopher Lake from Singapore and I, both of us, we started one of the projects called HoneyPie. What you and I can do, go to the website, download one of the image, burn into the SD card, boot in the so-called Raspberry Pi, like a Mei Pi, and then you will have your honeypot set up. So we try to make this process to be much simpler, much easier, so every one of us can uh, deploy honeypot in the easiest way. Yeah, and then from time to time, uh, during my free time, I'm part of uh, this uh, Hack in a Box HITB conference crew. Yeah, and then uh, oh, I have a lot of stickers and postcards. So later, just talk to me. Talk to me that, hey, you want this postcard, you want this uh, 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 sticker, I will pass it to you. Yeah, uh, because uh, next year we are having a hack in a box in uh, Singapore, and then in Amsterdam, and in Beijing as well. Yeah, uh, just a slightly promotion. Yeah. Story time. Trace back to year 2015. Okay, I'm starting to explore about the IoT security, and my approach is pretty simple. Uh, why not? We just create a honeypot, put it into the internet, and then let's try to observe what will happen to the honeypot itself. So this is the main idea that I have in mind back in 2015. That's also And then uh, at the time, I tried to study about the network protocol basis, which is look at the Internet of Things protocol. Just a couple of Google, and I found that this is a very interesting fact. Um, in daily basis, we browse website. So it is using SSL, HTTPS, but for internet protocol, they are much simpler compared to the HTTP, this type of common protocol itself. There are two fundamental design of the IoT protocol. The first requirement, it has to be lightweight, which is, for example, I have one sensor, IoT sensor, we put in the train tunnel, the trains pass by, zoom, and then we try to calculate what are the speed of this train itself. So this result will be sent back to the controller, and then this result will be sent through so-called 3G, 4G, so in, in this case, the bandwidth consumption had to be as low as possible. So this is the first criteria of the IoT protocol design. I mean, that, that's what I learned. The second thing is about 
it has to be reliable. So in terms of the protocol communication itself, it must have the so-called QoS, which is the quality of service. Yeah, so while I tried to dive in further and further, then I found that, uh oh I have two candidates, which is this true protocol. I'm going to implement this true protocol into my honeypot. Yeah. So this true protocol will be MQTT protocol, and then second one will be UPMP protocol. Yeah. So let's try to learn about this true protocol very quickly. So you may ask that, hey, Genjong, I have never heard about this MQTT protocol. But in fact, anyone have Facebook messengers on your phone? Anyone? Yeah. I think everyone has Facebook Messenger on their phone. Uh, the underlying protocol of Facebook Messengers is MQTT. Yeah, if you use uh, Facebook Messengers, this is the one that underlying uh, the uh, of the uh, application itself. So uh, it stands for MQ Telemetric Protocol. It's running from uh, port 1883. Uh, this protocol is just simply very lightweight and simple. Uh, it's running with this uh, so-called architecture, publish and subscribes. Oh, let's try to explore a bit about this protocol. So this protocol is very simple. Compared to HTTP, SSL, we have a lot of certificates uh, uh, exchange. But this one, it just, you have a central broker, which is the MQTT at the center. And then you have a couple of uh, different clients or so-called sensor connect to the same central broker. They subscribe to the same topics. Okay, for example, topic one, two, three. Then someone, as long as there's one client, try to publish a message. Hey, I'm here. This message will just they will just uh, broadcast into all the clients connect to the same broker itself. Pretty easy, right? Yeah, so I think right now everyone is the MQTT expert. <laughs> so let's see. We talked about LIWIC protocol. Uh, if this is uh, just a normal HTTP request, you can see that uh, we have the get request, host, uh, with a couple of uh, user agent and the cookie itself. In terms of the file size, in terms of the packet size, it will go up to around 600 bytes of data or even 700 bytes of data. But for MQTT, yeah, this is the interesting one, which is around 60 bytes of data. And this is included all the requests and response. What, it, what you're seeing on the screen itself, it's just a, a client try to publish a message called hello to the topics, sample topics. So, Pretty lightweight, pretty slick, which is only 60, uh, 70 bytes of data. And the broker will respond back with a few bytes of uh, acknowledgments. Yeah, so this is how MQTT uh, it works. Again, now everyone is an MQTT expert. Okay, so I'll move on to the second protocol, which let's try to make a, a quick one. Try to learn about this uh, UPMP protocol. Yeah, I think a lot of us understand about this protocol. Uh, personally, uh, this is my favorite because uh, I, I love about the concept that uh, zero network, uh, zero configuration uh, networking. For example, we have uh, the printer. And then uh, the printer, the first thing you will do, you will try to assign itself with the IP address by DHCP or static IP. The second thing, uh, the printer, they will start to announce, they will try to search among the same network. Who is my neighbors? Uh, who is my friends? Who, who else having the UPnP protocol enabled? And then what they will do is, uh, uh, he will start to announce himself, hey, I'm, uh, I'm the printer, who are you? Hey, I'm the printer, who are you? So, uh, then uh, someone can try to ask the printer, uh, the, the, the printer itself to provide more information, such as um, what's your printer versions, what's your firmware versions. So these are all done through by so-called this uh, UPnP protocol. And after that, you will proceed with the different phases, uh, such as uh, controlling and eventing. Um, I look into this protocol because uh, two years back, uh, Rapid7 making one of the very interesting research about UPnP protocol itself. And then uh, they found that for the whole world, 83 million of, uh, 81 million of unique IP address are uh, responding to this uh, UPnP request, which is they have the UPnP port enabled over the internet. And then 23% of that consists of one of the, they are using those, uh, one of the vulnerable versions of the UPnP. And uh, what we need to do, if you are planning to build a botnet, we, we just need to have one single packet, single UPnP request, and we are going to pawn that UPnP devices. Uh, so within a day or two, you have a botnet with 23 millions of nodes that you have in your hand. But again, don't tell anyone, I, I share with you how to build a botnet. <laughs> because I just tried to share with you about how to build a honeypot. But I, I, I'm trying to study about it, this uh, particular behavior. 
So right now, all of us, we have two protocols in our hand. The first thing is the MQTT. And then the second thing that we have is the uh, UPMB protocol in our hand. I'm going to implement these two protocols into the honeypot. So the honeypot that I used to is uh, Dionia honeypot. Uh, Nori, if not able to remember this name, Dionia honeypot, and then for Dionia Honeypot, uh, the best thing about Dionia honey, uh, Honeypot, it has a very powerful uh, network protocol emulation capability. So for, for Dionia, it speaks a lot of languages. Uh, for example, it can speak SMB protocol, it can speak about HTTP, FTP, uh, MySQL, even a voice over IP protocol. Yeah. And then what I did back in uh, 2015, I improved. Uh, improve or I plug two different protocols which is MQTT and UPMP inside in the Dionia Honeypot. So what I do, let's try to look at it together. So remember about the publish and subscribe architecture in the MQTT? So what I did is I changed uh, transform Dionia Honeypot to be the MQTT broker. So these are the guys who's standing in the between. I expect that all people will try to connect to my Honeypot. Yeah, and then they are going to publish some of the message to my honeypot. So my honeypot will say, yes, I got it. I got it for you. I got it. Then we will lock everything that uh, has been published or any message that connect to this uh, 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 honeypot itself. So this is the main idea. Yeah. Uh, I think this protocol is pretty simple to uh, emulate it. I try to add around like 12 or 15 MQT commands into it. And then later, UPMP protocol, this is much interesting. I decided to turn Dionia Honeypot into a different devices. We can choose the can pick. I want to profile one, profile two, profile three. And this profile will be, for example, we can turn Dionia Honeypot to be a super micro IPMP devices. Uh, yeah, we just need to, uh, need to change the setting itself. And what if we, let's try to turn the Honeypot into a Samsung TV. Yeah. So let's try to turn the, uh, the Honeypot itself to be a Xbox 360. So this is my plan, which is uh, try to turn into the different devices. I'm going to put into the internet and try to see what we will have. Yeah, I've been doing it for the past 15 months and yeah, 18 months. Yeah, definitely. Uh, right now, we are going to push this to the internet. So this is back in 2015. But for 2016, this guy come into the scene, which is a Mirai Bonnet. Yeah, uh, I would say that a lot of us know about Mirai Bonnet because uh, definitely, this guy tried to pawn, try to go into a loss of uh, 150,000 of devices, internal of TikTok devices, such as home router, DVR machines, and uh, IP cameras. And then uh, they will try to guess just a default password, 60 uh, default pa uh, password. Once they go into the environment, they will try to plant the Mirai botnet into that. Um, personally, I, I love the best part of Mirai botnet is uh, I, I, I love the source code to be, to be open source. Any one of us can build a botnet again. But don't tell anyone that I keep sharing about how to build a botnet. You can download from the GitHub, try to compile it, and try to see uh, what you, uh, we can have. But the problem is, for me, even the source code is, uh, is uh, open source. But for me, it takes me more than a week to try to compile it. So lesson learned. So uh, for the Mirai botnet, they have three different components. The first component will, will be the scanner, which is the one that try to be responsible for scanning the whole internet finding default password, and they will pass it, those passwords to the second uh, component, which is called loader. This loader guy, they will try to load all the things, all the Mirai uh, payloads into the system itself, into devices. Once the payload got executed, uh, they will connect to the so-called command and control server. So these are the three main components. But for me, it took me almost a week. This is pretty embarrassing because I used to build VM with just one gigabyte of RAM inside. I realized that Mirai Bonnet don't love this thing. They want at least two gigabytes of uh, RAM in, uh, in the VM. So this is my mistakes, which is uh, slightly uh, embarrassing. Next time, if you would like to love uh, to build your own botnet or build your own source code, so buy more RAM. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Mirai botnet, they're using lots of Telnet protocol. A lot of us uh, know about Telnet's proto uh, protocol, but maybe two things that you may not know about Telnet protocol, which is uh, this protocol is uh, 
developed back in 1969 when Neil Armstrong go up to the moon. Uh, these guys start to, I mean, Telnet start to be using. And also, we can watch a Star Wars movie with Telnet. Has, any, has anyone doing it before? Watching Star Wars with Telnet protocol? No? All right, yeah. So you can just Google about it. Because uh, Google, they have a very nice tutorial. So how you can watch Telnet, uh, how, how, how you can watch uh, Star Wars by Telnet. So the tutorial will tell you, okay, right click on the command prompt, run as uh, administrators, then type Telnet inside that, copy and paste this URL, and then you press the enter. And then uh, you will see the message coming in. A long, long time ago from the uh, galaxy far, far away. And then this is, uh, you can imagine uh, the sound is out. Dun, 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 I mean, this is, I mean, I, I made these sounds, all right? I mean, this is not uh, in the Telnet, but I mean, what you can do is uh, we can watch uh, Telnet, uh, Star Wars in Telnet itself. Yeah, so just now we have MQTT, and then we have a uh, UPMP protocol. What I'm going to do right now, I'm going to run a Telnet uh, honeypot, yeah? Um, I've been using this honeypot called Glutton. Glutton honeypot, uh, this is newly developed by the, honey, uh, the HoneyNet project. Uh, this, proje uh, this project, Glutton, it means that uh, all eating. In Chinese, Glutton is actually a fish or a fish. The last one is a fish. This is a fish. So can easily get the What it do is uh, just like this, uh, this, uh, this guy eating all the hamburgers into, uh, into himself. Yeah. Then uh, you can see that um, this concept is pretty nice. This honeypot will listen on all the ports, and then all the traffics will be handled by different uh, handler. For example, even in the port 443, the telnet is running on port 443, this honeypot will be able to, to handle it because uh, it will pass it on to the different handler. Yeah. Um, try to improve this uh, telnet protocol in a garden. And eventually, this turned out to be a, one of the very uh, beautiful conversations uh, with uh, Mirai Bonnet. Yeah, I, uh, I remember that uh, I'm trying to run Glutton Honeypot, and within three minutes, I got my first hit, which is uh, Mirai Bonnet trying to start, uh, start to talk, uh, talk to me. So right now, we have our Honeypot set up, uh, MQTT, UPMP, and then uh, the Telnet protocol. So what we're going to do, yeah, we are just going to push it on the internet, stay relaxed, I was told by someone that I need to put a pictures of the cat photos in a hacker conference because uh, these cat photos definitely will get everyone high. I don't know, get everyone excited. Yeah. <laughs> so let me put uh, another one, all right? <laughs> so just a disclaimer right here. I know a lot of security research companies try, try to deploy a lot of honeypot around the world. So some of them, they have thousands of honeypot around the world. But for me, I will have one in my room, just one. There's one in my, uh, in my room. My wife uh, always complain. Why you have something always blinking at, uh, uh, at the corner? No, this is my honeypot. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, right now I'm going to share with you some of the story that I have for the past uh, 18 months about my honeypot itself. So let's try to go through by different protocol itself, which is from the MQTT. Then let's, let's uh, explore about uh, UPMP and about Telnet. Yeah. So for the past 18 months, for the past two years, um, it's, it's pretty silent. I only have around 600 or 700 requests that came into my, to my room and tried to talk to me in uh, MQTT language. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's pretty quiet. Some days we'll have like 30 requests or less. Um, I'm pretty disappointed when I sing this uh, particular uh, uh, graph itself. Uh, for me, Honeypot is meant to be hacked. If the honeypot is not got, uh, there's no traffic inside the honeypot, or there's no activities in the honeypot, the honeypot does not serve its uh, purpose, definitely. So uh, let's try to go into further, sorry, what we, what we see, uh, saw from the MQTT perspective. The honeypot will be able to do a fingerprinting to see who are the ones who are connecting to us. And then uh, from time to time, we are seeing this guy, they are using some of the specific uh, client ID, and then they will log in with a username called now, Password call now. Yeah. Uh, it's just pretty simple. I'm pretty disappointed. I'm so sad when I having this particular uh, result itself. I'm thinking of, oh shit, my honeypot failed. So 
But when I tried to look at the, the next protocol, which is the UPnP protocol, I found that I found these very beautiful attack pictures. Uh, let me share to you. Yeah. So th this is what I have. Uh, I call it this picture as a uh, Malaysia KLCC Twin Tower. Or you can see uh, two big spikes yeah, together. Or it could be two Taiwan 101, uh, back uh, for the for the two, uh, uh, 18 months, I have uh, 6.5 millions of connections try to connect to my room. Uh, well, I'm not that popular. Why you keep connecting stuff to my room with 6,000 of 6.5 millions of requests? Yeah, um, these two spikes happened during June uh, last year, and also uh, there's one is happened in uh, end of December. Yeah, so let's try to dive in into what's happening in the December uh, uh, time frame. Uh, yep, mom, I have 3,000 requests into my room in the daily basis for the end of 2017. So, happy new year, guys. This is my, this is my new year gift. <laughs> 3,000 requests of UPMP always talk to my room uh, in, uh, in this year end of uh, 2007, uh, uh, year end of 2016, new year eve of two, uh, 2017. Uh, just a simple calculation. I understand that uh, there are around 200 or 300 requests in a minutes per minute basis into my room. Uh, I love to explore about what is uh, the, uh, the, the exact traffic looks like. When you look at the green side, that's a green side. Actually, that's a UPMP. Then at the green side, this is what I have in my honeypot itself. So you can see side by side comparison. The first main differences is about the HOST, this particular header. The normal one would be just have the H as a capital letter, but uh, H, uh, but what I have received is a H O S D, 全部都是大写的。然后我就开始去 Google 一下，看看哎到底什么，其实这这个是什么，什么啊、呃、元素还是什么东西。然后我就发觉，其实这个 U P M P， 其实这个 traffic 其实它是来自几个不同 open source 类型的啊、呃、那一个 D D O S， 大家都可以在 GitHub 里面啊、呃、把它给下载下来。然后你。当然就会开始做啊 DDoS 这个 attacks， 还有 and then I see another 啊、uh, interesting thing is 啊、uh, the host usually supposed to be 啊、uh, a broadcast address such as 啊 two three nine two five five two five five dot two five zero， but sometimes you'll see those kind of 啊、uh, specific IP address has been configured into the UPM UPMP request， yeah so I mean this is one of some of the interesting attacks 啊、uh, that I seen from 啊、uh, UPM MQTT and then 啊、uh, from 啊、uh, the UPMP per,、uh, perspective。Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for the next couple of minutes, I'm going to share with you about some of the love story between my honeypot and Mirai botnets. Ah, uh, 我啊，你们怎么会觉得哎，怎么这个讲师在讲爱情故事啊？其实啊，我觉得哎，可以把可以看得出啊，我的我的 honeypot 跟那个啊 botnet 在一起聊，他们在一起对话，在一起交流。到后来到了那到到了最后的时候 ，Mirai Bonnet 就很自愿的把他们的 payload 给送了下来。好 ，So ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is for Telnet protocol. Uh, this is exactly the raw logs for Glutton Honeypot. So let me share with you just a simple quick tricks or、uh, to read about this data. Quick tips. So you can see from the raw logs, we will understand who are the one who connecting to us. Second things, you will see they log in with the username and password, and then they will perform some of the uh, further commands, pay attention on those uh, lines that contain the word RECV, receive. These are the one. These are all the incoming commands that have been I've been receiving from my uh, honeypot. So in this case, you can see after they log in with the username uh, called root password five four two two three two one, and then they will, they will try to uh, send a, uh, the command called enable system shell. And then also slash bin slash uh, busy, uh, busy box, uh, busy box uh, Mirai. So this is just a normal um, Mirai scanning phase because uh, just now, uh, as I uh, mentioned, Mirai have three components. The first one will be the scanning, the second will be the payload delivery, and then the, uh, the third one will be, will be the so-called uh, command and control channel. So this is what happening in the, uh, at the beginning. So now our love story is starting now. Uh, this is the first variant that I've seen. What you're seeing on the screen, uh, I try to make uh, everything highlighted in the green color so everyone can see it much clearly. So this is the exact sequence that from coming from Mirai Bonnet. 
So once they log into our, to, your, to your devices, they will try to check if these devices is the one that they are targeted with. So they will try to uh, perform some checking, for example, PS, 那, 那个指令, PS, 或者是cat slash PO, uh, proc slash M-O-U-N-T-T-S, uh, and then they will try to check if uh, this folder is uh, writable. What they will do is they will try to echo some of the bytes data into uh, slash dev slash dot nippon. Yeah, Mirai, in the Japanese word, I understand this Mirai stands for future. Yeah, and then yeah, in this case, um, they will try to perform some of the random uh, strings with the words called ECCHI. ECCHI in a, in a voice basis is Ichi, or Ichi, Ichi. Ichi in the Japanese language is means sexy or naughty. Yeah, so I would believe that this, uh, this guy who creating this uh, Mirai Bonnet, Definitely, they are a big fan of, uh, of the anime and maybe a, a, a big fan of the Japanese culture. So yeah, in this case, after they have all these things, they'll try to wget the secondary payloads, which is the main Mirai, botnet, uh, Mirai payloads from the loader itself. You can see from the screen, which is a wget, HTTP, uh, double colon, slash s, 59185241.2, slash bin, Mirai.arm. So this is the first variant that I, I've seen. Uh, uh, this is exactly the default variants if you try to build the whole things from uh, the source code. Yeah. And then the second thing, uh, this particular variant is, is slightly smarter because uh, they understand that uh, they will go through the same thing, which is to try to log into the same system devices. And then uh, they will perform, uh, try to check with the PS command, try to check with the environment itself. But what they will do, they don't like the, the wget commands because they understand that with the wget command, you are trying to go to another website to download something down. We, this process can be easily blocked. Someone can just get an IP address, I will just block the loader. So in this case, uh, this Mirai uh, payload de uh, delivery will, uh, will be failed. So for this particular uh, variance of botnet, they, they use the echo, these functions. They try to write a lot of uh, uh, echo bytes into a particular file. Those highlighted in the green color, uh, X, 7F, 45, 4C, 46. This is the magic header of the ERF file. Yeah. So you have a couple of uh, commands that continue ongoing, ongoing, and then eventually Mirai Botnet will own the box. So yeah, the third variance is pretty interesting. Uh, I'm running a honeypot, but someone's always try to, beginning on the June and until July, someone keeps scolding me from the, in, from the external uh, network. I just try to be friend with you, Mirai Botnet. But why you are keep scolding me? Why you are keep uh, speaking a rude words to me? WTF, yeah. So this is what I observed from my honeypot itself. This guy always sending me the message, WTF, 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 WTF. Uh, what a friend, yeah. And then uh, what he will do is, uh, well, while they try to check if uh, this folder is writable, they will try to copy slash bin slash uh, echo file into uh, the, uh, the name, the file name called Big Bob Pine. Um,其实我本身我看了这个整个lock,大概这个日记看了整大概一个月。然后当时我心中非常的非常的非常的气愤。怎么你天天在骂着我的这个honeypot?就我我只是要对你友善而已。怎么你每一天就是来一个WTF
And then back then, for Mal uh, formulation, a few years back, there's a very sad story about MH370, the missing plane. Until today, we're still not able to find that. But uh, this guy, Lisa Squats, they claim to be the one that they defaced Malaysia Airline website. And they put a, a page called 404, plane not found. I mean, it's sad because uh, we are still trying to find the, uh, the plane, but uh, you try to deface the website and then you put in these kind of sentences. Yeah. So I got a Facebook. Then I tried to go for, go for a Twitter. Oh, this guy is on Twitter as well. But uh, just uh, be careful. Don't follow this guy. Just try to don't follow this guy. You can observe about what their activities or what is their next DDoS uh, services that they are trying to perform with against a lot of sub gaming system, but don't try to follow them. So in this case, uh, 8月13号,其实我看得出 So yeah, these are the third uh, variants that I have. And then uh, you have seen a very sexy, naughty um, uh, Mirai botnet. And then you have seen a very smart Mirai botnet. You have seen a very rude Mirai botnet. So I've seen this, the fourth botnet, this, is, this guy is pretty happy. Because uh, what, they, what they will do is uh, they will try to write some files when they try to test this file is uh, writable. They will, test, uh, they will write a file to, to a file name called slash dev. Dot hajike. I think hajike in the Japanese language it means go crazy or happy. Yeah. So I think this is some of the characteristics uh, uh, that they have. And also they will use they will love the word called PPP helper. Uh, for the default, um, for the default, uh, those uh, Mirai botnet it will always use a uh, DVR helper. But this guy they love a uh, PPP helper. So the last one, this uh, the fifth one, the love story that I have. Mirai Bonnet is a pretty, this guy is a pretty nasty and pretty uh, sneaky because uh, from, by looking at the WGET uh, way of they doing that, uh, the WGET, usually they will try to download an ERF file, .erf or .arm, .armv7. But in this case, they're downloading a picture, one.jpg. Uh, but this is not a picture, it's just a name. Yeah. But I mean, in fact, the file itself is still an ERF file, which is um, Mirai's uh, Binaries are which they customize and they, uh, and they build by themselves. These pictures will become a random names which 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 call Z X C V B N M on on the device once they download it. So this uh, Z X C B N V is in fact is the sequence of your keyboard. So 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 the keyboard will have uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9, 10, Q W E R T, A S D F, and then this is the 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 third row that you have. Yeah. So I think. These uh, particular uh, variants, they are just uh, pretty sneaky and pretty nasty. Yeah. Um, definitely, as honeypot lovers, we would just love to collect all these uh, payload and binaries uh, that they delivered to us. Yeah. Uh, this is the result of the love, uh, of the love story, definitely. Uh, you can see a lot of binary that's been collected. Uh, and then uh, different file size. Uh, it can become as small as a 2 KB of files, and even, up, and even though the, uh, you can have a much bigger size around that, uh, 200 KB of files, definitely. Yep. Mirai itself is not enough. I don't know why. Mirai tried to fall in love to my honeypots. Another, honey, uh, another botnet falling in love to my honeypot uh, as well. So this is the last story that, that I'm going to share with you today. So while looking at all the Mirai botnets, I, feel I, I found another botnet, which is a Hajime uh, botnet. I uh, tried to talk to my honeypot, and they are fighting to each other. I've seen this botnet since the day one I'm uh, running uh, the Telnet honeypot, uh, this particular protocol honeypot since uh, early this year. So I love to, personally, I like to mention that this honeypot is the honeypot that pawned all the single things in just uh, nine, with nine commands. Yeah. So what they will do is uh, they log into your, uh, to, the, to the device with the username, password, and then they will perform a checking, for example. They will use the DD command, try to write uh, 52 bytes of data into, uh, into the disk, try to check if uh, this folder is writable. And then they will just perform a wget and get the additional payload. Within nine commands, boom, the box is pawned. Um, yep, by looking at this command, but interestingly happened is during May 27, uh, from the top, from the green, uh, those are the initial versions of the Hajime botnet. But then for uh, May, uh, what started from uh, May 27, something is missing. 
which is the, this particular wget command is gone. So I'm trying to compare these two together. What the hell? What's happening? But um, the main things that are happening just is very slightly different, which is the DD command. The initial one, they are in the middle of the DD, that whole command. But the new variants, they just take the middle of the command. Once they remove these uh, parentheses, in fact, it bypasses a lot of detections of a lot of uh, open source honeypot that are available on the internet. So I think those guys, they are reading detection. They are trying to check if any ones try to uh, detect them. And then they are trying to modify uh, what they can do in terms of uh, trying to, uh, try to gain back all the access. Yeah. After I fix the code, yeah, we got the get back. And then we have even more better things, which is a uh, we, uh, we noticed that hey, Hajime Bonex start to use uh, TFTP command with a special sequence of the uh, configure uh, of the argument TFTP dash L dash R and uh, dash G. Yeah. So I shared a love story about uh, for Mirai Bonnet with my honeypot. They how to fight, 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 how to 不只是 b o n e 很多时候他们还是会有一些比较好笑、比较搞笑的。很多时候，那些呃从外面进来的、啊、这一些指令呢，有时候他们只是写一个单单的字眼，我到此一游，就就是大概就是这样子。Echo, no dance, rap, I'm here. Yeah. Or sometimes they will,、uh, they will just put a word called payload. Yeah. And then I'm also sometimes I think, what the hell? Are you going to download the file from a zero dot zero dot zero? Uh, from Visual WGET. From my perspective, I think this is the mix, misconfiguration C2, which is maybe when, when they test the, the bond itself, but they don't、uh, really configure it properly, with the, but they will leave it as default 0.000. But the problem for me, I don't want to see, 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 I don't want to Uh, I've shared about the story that what I have, what I've seen for the UPnP protocol, MQTT, and then the Telnet protocol. I'm going to show you some of, some of my pictures about for my honeypot itself. Yeah. So this is the pictures that I have、uh, for my honeypot、uh, at home. Yeah. And then I have one until I I grow my honeypot from one to three. So this is the daytime. This is the nighttime. So this is the daytime. This is the nighttime. This is the daytime. This is the nighttime. Yeah. <laughs> so.、Uh, If you would like to play with a honeypot,、uh, definitely、uh, this is a, a couple of links that you can try to play with. Yeah,、uh, just download the honeypot and set it up、uh, yourself.、Um, um, you can try about this、uh, Dynamic Honeypot, Glutton, this is Chan Shi, or this is Bu Ying Chao, or this is Honey Pie, this is the whole Chao Mei Pie image. Yeah. Also, this is what I have、uh, for the day.、Uh, again,、uh, I would say that、uh, playing with honeypot is a very good learning experience for me.、Um, I have just a very simple setup. I see a lot of different activities, and those activities is out of my expectations. I don't. I have not realized that I can have a very close relationship with the Mirai Bonnet. And then, of course, I think that this whole process is a very fun thing. So, I recommend everyone. 每呃，在在座的各呃各位，其实都可以把一个 Honeypot 自己架设上来，然后玩一玩，聆听整个 Internet 这个互联网上面其实到底发生了什么啊、呃、什么事情，然后那一些怎么他们让他们跑进去你你家中或者是你办公室中的啊、呃、这些密罐。好 ，So 呃、uh, ，I believe that I just doing all these things just for my hobby basis. Yeah, it's not about my work. 啊、uh, ，I deploy the holding just at、uh, at home. So I believe that every one of you can do even much 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 better compared to me. Yeah. Um, uh, at the end, uh, let's try. Uh, I just do a simple promotion. This is about a、uh, hang the box conference.、Uh, next year we have a hang the box conference in、uh, Amsterdam, in、uh, Singapore, and then for October next year we have one in、uh, Beijing. Yeah. So feel free to join us. Submit any topics if you like to. Yeah. Or, or, and definitely talk to me. So I'm going to give you some of the <laughs> stickers, postcard. I have a lot in my bag. Yeah. So just say hi and talk to me. Yeah, I think、uh, this is what I have、uh, for today. I think、uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Hikon, for uh, uh, for the opportunity. Appreciate. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Good. Uh, very exciting speech. Now, I don't know if you have any questions. Uh, we're open. We still have a little time.
大家对物联网或者是架设哈尼帕，呃，或者是 Mira 有什么相关的问题？有没有？啊,啊，等一下，我都会在这边、啊，所以其实大家可以聊一聊。如果大家有兴趣，要怎么啊，怎么去弄啊，或者啊，怎么去玩这个啊，物联网的这个啊，密管。好 ，OK， 好，那呃，我们就再次掌声鼓励一下。Thank you。要有任何问题的话，我们可以到前面来。大家如果害羞的话，请到前面来。好，谢谢大家。